Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report for Wednesday. And, of course, our first hour on Wednesday is the Lewis Foundation, Harley Schlanger. Uh, Harley, I just saw a documentary, uh, 12 Minutes, uh, with uh, sent to me, and I'm going to be posting it up today regarding what Obamacare is going to do. It's a totalitarian regime. What's going on with Obama, of course, is uh, there's a Senate state hearing, and I want you to open this can of worms up because... Uh, in a clever way, they're going to throw Obama under the bus because he's totally responsible. Uh, this documentary I saw last night on Frontline trying to compare Obama and Romney, and of course it was always slanted toward Obama, but they did put some things in there that are pretty questionable. Uh, one of the things that obviously he tried to say is because he uh, was no longer he had a mandate after the second year, he really ensconced himself in the special operations and the drone strikes and operations like uh, trying to secure uh, Libya from, the, from Muammar Gaddafi. Uh, the recent Benghazi disaster is a good example that they don't have a, re, a, a working relationship with a real government there and the, uh, the killing of our supposed ambassador in Benghazi is a good example that they knew there were security risks and they didn't respond appropriately so uh, the State Department hearings are really going to open this can of worms up today and Obama is front and center with the comments of Romney on the uh, hot seat well the the uh, committee hearing is actually in the House of Representatives it's a committee on oversight and government reform which oh, that's is Darryl Issa. Darryl that's Issa. Darryl. Daryl Isaac, who actually is our district here in Vista, California. Yeah. Now, what I'd like to do is just go through this from the top in a quasi-chronological way to give your listeners a sense of why this is so important. Because what this hearing will show, even if the media tries to slant it and spin it, is it will show that what LaRouche Pack said three days after the attack on Benghazi, that Obama is criminally complicit in the murder of a U.S. ambassador, is true. It's been borne out by the facts, and I would say that rather than depend on the fickleness of the American voter uh, between now and November 6th, who can go up and down and up and down, we've got to move now to get Obama out immediately. And here's what's happened with this hearing. There are several people who are testifying, uh, one of whom is Patrick F. Kennedy, who is the Undersecretary of State for Management. Another one is Eric Nordstrom, a State Department official responsible for security for American diplomats in Libya. And a third person is a Green Beret colonel who is providing security in Benghazi until August of 2012. The report from the people who left, like this, this uh, Green Beret colonel, as well as Nordstrom, the State Department official responsible for security, what they're going to say is that there were numerous incidents of attacks and threats against Americans and the Brits in Benghazi that caused them to demand increased security. The Brits, in fact, left in June or July of 2012 after two assassination attempts against their ambassador. Benghazi is in the eastern part of Libya near a town called Derna, which is a hotbed of al-Qaeda militias, which were armed by the U.S. and the French and NATO in the operation against Gaddafi. And the reports from the State Department and U.S. risk assessment from the Pentagon and elsewhere officials is that Benghazi is a frontier town. There's no Libyan army presence. There's no government presence that's capable of suppressing the militias. And the report is from uh, this one fellow, um, I can't remember his name now, the, the Green Beret, who was in daily contact uh, with Ambassador Stevens, was that Stevens was fearful that there would be attacks. In fact, on 9-11, the very day of the attack, Stevens sent another note warning of the threat to Americans in that part of Libya. Now, the, I think the interesting statement is that this Green Beret official, uh, thinks Colonel Andy, I can't remember the last name right now, I'll get it before the, the show's over, but he sent communiques saying they need more security and instead, 34 security personnel were, were pulled out of Benghazi. So right, and, the and, U.S. I mean, they, military... They not only pulled them, they also, re, they also demanded, according to Hillary Clinton, they demanded that they not carry any weapons with bullets. 
Well, that was the, the people they were hiring to replace the American security, namely exactly. Libyan and British companies. But the important thing is that, number one, there was a, a risk assessment that it's highly risky and we need more security. Secondly, those requests were ignored. Third, personnel was pulled. Now, then when the attack took place, Patrick Kennedy, who's the Under Secretary of State, gave a report the next day in which he said this was a terrorist attack. And yet for the next nine days, people like Susan Rice, the U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, who's very much involved in this Libya thing, Jay Carney, the spokesman for President Obama, were saying that it was a riot against the anti-Muslim film and it got out of control. Now, here's the point. They were lying because the intelligence assessment and the State Department assessment were the same, that it was a terrorist attack. And they're now trying to say, well, there were people in intelligence who were saying it was uh, this riot. But that's the same thing as George Tennant falling on the sword for George Bush on weapons of mass destruction. They're lying to protect the commander-in-chief. Now, what are they protecting in Obama? Number one, his negligence, his criminal negligence in the death of the ambassador. Number two, the effects of his unconstitutional involvement in the war to overthrow Libyan dictator Gaddafi. And number three, that he's continued to cover up the Saudi role in funding international terrorism, which goes back to the original 9-11. And he was on record as President of the United States that he would declassify 28 pages of documents on Saudi involvement in 9-11. He right. never did that. And so That's this because is they're totally president. involved, yeah. There's a president who lied to the, the family members of the victims of 9-11. He lied to the Congress. He lied to the American people. He lied to the military. He lied to the international community. Now, given that, what this hearing will, the conclusion of this hearing should be that he should be removed for office, uh, from office, either through rapid impeachment proceedings or through uh, the 25th Amendment, which says that when one is not competent of fulfilling the duties of the office, he can be removed. And if anything, this shows that Obama is not capable and not competent in fulfilling the duties of the office. And not only that, he lies about what actually happens in order to protect his reelection. Yeah. And this is, this is not acceptable. It's quite amazing, isn't it? It shows somebody who's number one incompetent, and number two is a significant liar that is willing to do almost anything to get reelected, including even promulgate a war, cover up uh, security breaches, which I think were on purpose because I think they're going to make hay by getting rid of one of their own brown shirts who knew too much about the operations that set up the change, the regime change in Libya. Uh, well, and what's it, important, Dr. Deagle, is this is now coming out on CNN, CBS, ABC. So even as the Obama spinmeisters come out and try to contain it, it's exploding. And you can be sure that there will be YouTube videos of these testimonies of the uh, personnel involved. I personally have seen some of these risk management reports, which one of which points out there were 230 security incidents between September 2011 and last July, and that each one of these was filed as a separate report with the State Department, uh, with the Security Division of the State Department. So they cannot say they did not know of the risk. Now, furthermore, there are messages, constant messages from Stevens to the State Department warning of the threats to him. Yeah, and he was aware, and they were aware, and they did this on purpose, and Key Bono, who's going to benefit from this disaster? Well, Obama was promulgating this because they have full intentions, even in spite of this Al-Qaeda incident, of supporting Al-Qaeda attacks and regime change in Syria. Welcome back, and um, Carly, let's dissect some of the issues that are uh, brewing now. And I tell everybody out there, get the documentary film 
Uh, Obama 2016, which tells you what it'll be like if you have another term, but even more so get the documentary film that's out there now for 12 bucks and change uh, called Dreams of My Real Father. Now, when you, you, do, you have to understand, when you compare Obama and Romney, uh, firstly, Romney at least can operate as a businessman. Romney, at least since 2008, is pro-life. Romney has a lot of warts on him, and I'm very concerned about his policy being too tight with the Israelis and authorizing a possible war after the election. But I believe that Romney and Ryan can be somewhat controlled. Whereas Obama is a red diaper baby communist who is completely out of control and he has mental illness. He doesn't have the intellectual power to even negotiate with the Republicans when he shoved in Romney care, health care. He didn't follow the template of Romney care. If you look at this video clip, which I'm going to post up, it's so obscene. And now he's even trying to cover up his intelligence breaches, which, by the way, I think were on purpose. I, I don't think this is just by chance and incompetence. I think they, they purposely put him out on a stick and even put, allowed the YouTube, and of course you know intelligence are monitoring, they allowed the YouTube uh, and Facebook clips to be put up of even the, um, how can I say, the running route for the, the ambassador when he was running around Benghazi doing his uh, morning run. Well, let, so me, let I, me just take up a couple of those issues because I, I, I'm not sure that they intentionally set him up to be killed, <coughs> except except in the following way. Uh, unless, they're, unless they're so incompetent and so stupid, well, which also th means but here's the they shouldn't be doing it. Their strategy in Libya, just like their strategy in Syria, is to establish regimes run by people who we don't know, and heavily infiltrated by al-Qaeda, heavily funded by the Saudis who are promoting an international jihadist movement. And I don't personally think that Barack Obama is a supporter of an international jihadist movement. I think he is a hollow suit puppet who is doing what he's told to bring down Gaddafi, Assad, and to turn the Middle East over to he's also there these to kinds destroy of the terrorist forces. He's also there to destroy the middle class. If you look at Obama... Well, that's, we, at, we, we, let's get to the Ameri what he's doing to America in a minute. I just want to yeah, stick with this yeah. for our listeners so they understand what they're going to see on the television tonight. Right. That what this administration did in Libya was make a decision on behalf of Tony Blair, British intelligence, and British and French oil companies to get rid of Gaddafi, who knew a lot had been in an alliance with Tony Blair since 2006, who had been in an alliance with U.S. intelligence for the last five years. So they got rid of Gaddafi. They had him killed. They had the regime overturned in a violation of the U.N. Charter and a violation of the U.S. Constitution. Yeah. Now, the U.N. Charter, you know, I, I think the U.N. Charter should be adhered to because it does say you should not launch offensive wars. But our Constitution is explicit. The president has no right to launch wars. And yet this president did it without any strategy for what you're going to do after you go in and bust up the country. And so as a result, any Americans who are in Libya right now are in danger because we turned the country over to a jihadist force. Now, the president is planning on doing the exact same thing with Syria. And it's not just Americans who will be in danger, but any Christian who still lives in Syria, any Jewish person who lives in Syria, who, by the way, the Jews are protected in Syria by the government, exactly. and any Shiite Muslim who lives in Syria will be threatened by the Saudi-backed <coughs> Sunni insurgency. Now, exactly. then you go one step further, what you, were, you and I were talking about before the program. These are the same people who are encouraging the Turkish military, which is a pretty hefty military, uh, to camp out on the border of Syria and prepare for a full invasion. Now, the Syrian army is a pretty strong army itself, but the problem is its leadership has been decimated with assassinations, with bombings. Uh, you, you've had the country's been put through hell. The so called Syrian insurgents are not Syrian, they're Libyan, they're Iraqi, they're Saudi, they're British, they're Pakistani and they're funded by the Saudis. And yeah. so what I'm saying on Obama is that while I don't know to what extent he's conscious that, that he's unleashing these forces, 
he is doing it. And there are people telling him not to do it, like the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And therefore, he represents an immediate danger to every American on the planet. And for that reason, in his violation of the Constitution, he should be removed from office. Yeah, absolutely. In other words, uh, he, he ignores his own advisors. He ignores reports that came out from 16 agencies. Uh, we believe even the security dangers of Israel's current policy. They won't integrate their military and their strategic forces and even their... Uh, radar command services with America, and yet they're threatening and trying to manipulate even the election. When we had that uh, speech a month ago by Netanyahu on the American media, he was directly interfering with the with the election, and even the papers inside Israel said so. They said, "Well, you know, what actually, is he doing? it led to an interesting split between the defense minister Ehud Barak." And Netanyahu, because Barack said Netanyahu is harming U.S. Israeli relations. Of course, and, he you was. know, in terms of the the Iran situation, the president just allowed the authorization of the MEK. They took them off the terrorist list, even though in the past the MEK conducted terrorist activities against Americans. Wow! And so the the MEK is based in Iraq. It's based in Iran. Uh, they may be the force integrated with the Mossad and U.S. intelligence that's killing Iranian scientists. So anywhere you look in the Middle East, our president, or I should say the president of the United States, is deploying on a British imperial game plan which goes against the national interests of the United States. And that's, that's a crime. He's, uh, so he took an oath to uphold the Constitution, and nowhere does the Constitution say we're supposed to support terrorists when it's convenient for the British Empire. Yeah, exactly. And, of course, one of the blowbacks is this incident in Benghazi. Yeah, and that's, you see, that's the point I'm making, that the, you, you should have had more security there, you should have known it was coming, but the deeper question is what happens when you destabilize a government and spread sophisticated weapons in the hands of people you don't know? Or uh, you, you, Didn't we learn like that going, in Afghanistan? Well, it's like going to a psych ward and asking the people that are psychotic killers that are in a lockdown ward who are, happen to be out in a, in a kind of a, a, a recreation yard with people with guns aimed at them because they're dangerous, and you decide, well, why don't we just let them have the guns? It's, that's how crazy it is. It's a, it's, well, this is, look, this is what we did in Afghanistan. We right. provided weapons to forces that were funded by the Saudis, including by Osama bin Laden, who then used those weapons and turned them on Americans. Yeah, and we're exactly. doing the same thing. This is a continuation of 35 years of Bush policy, of British policy, and now Obama owns it. It's his policy, and it's got to stop. If our country doesn't have the moral courage to stop this kind of corruption, then we're not going to continue to exist. Uh, Obama has outpushed Bush, though. I think he's actually done things that even Bush would cringe That's right. at. Yeah, amazing. Back in a moment with more. because the pupil failed, right? Bizarre. Amazing, amazing. Uh, I'm going to be posting up some articles here, uh, too, to deal with the current position of Romney on the pro-life issue, the uh, current issues dealing with the financial issues. Uh, under Obama, which is uh, QE3, which is tied directly, it's interesting, you mentioned on the break, a direct tie between Tim Geithner's relatives and Obama's mother and, and others. Obama's so can, mother was working with the Ford Foundation when she went to Indonesia. Now, Obama's mother is a, an interesting case study because a lot of people are, are looking for these so-called communist and socialist ties without realizing that communism and socialism and, and fascism all have a common father or right. mother you might say which is the british empire a uh, policy of depopulation through destroying the sovereignty of nations and de uh, eliminating institutions of self-government right in and, fact they actually paid uh, karl marx to go to the british library 
and pull up all the philosophical arguments made by the Illuminists in uh, Britain over centuries and collimate them all together, compile them all together into his uh, documents, which became the template for the rise of the Soviet Union, which was completely a British operation. People don't realize that the revolution uh, in Russia was completely run by the Brits. Well, there's another point to that, which is that in the modern economic period, the, this, the so-called debate between the Keynesians and the Friedmanites, uh, they both start with the same assumption, which is that it's all about money. And once you leave it in the realm of money, then you leave it in the hands of financiers rather than national governments. And so a lot of the fights that we have, whether it's budget debates, tax debates, spending debates, are really contained by the ideology which has the common mother of the British Empire. Now, just to go back to Stanley Ann Dunham uh, or Mrs. Obama, uh, her <laughs> basic yeah. feature is that she came out of these Margaret Mead networks, these anthropological networks that went all over the globe to try and profile populations to figure out how to keep them enslaved under the empire. And Margaret Mead was one of the key people in pushing population reduction. Uh, she's a she's a six foot tall, very ugly woman who carried a gigantic African stick with her wherever she went, and was not above swinging at people who disagreed with her. But very nasty woman. But her whole theory was that the world is overpopulated, and we've got to figure out a way to limit science and technology and keep people in their more primitive stage where they're more natural. Now. This is exactly what the Ford Foundation was trying to do to stop the developing sector in the 1950s and 60s. And one of the key operatives of the Ford Foundation was the father of Timothy Geithner, who was essentially the boss of Obama's mother when she was working for the Ford Foundation in Indonesia. Oh, my gosh. So you it's see pretty, these pretty. kinds of parallels and connections, and you see why Obama is loyal to Geithner, who himself is a criminal engaged in criminal fraud, both as president of New York Federal Reserve Bank and as the Treasury Secretary of the United States. Well, he had inside information, and there's evidence that he transferred information that allowed some of his buddies to make a lot of money. Well, and more importantly, he protected banks that were bankrupt and provided trillions of dollars of free credit to them. So You're talking about the continue. LIBOR scandal, where, where he actually knew about this in advance by the years and then became appointed as the as the fed chairman uh <laughs> this is well, and, and mind-boggling here's, here's the the other important point on this which, because what what geithner did was not only defend these banks but made sure they weren't prosecuted and he worked together with eric holder on that and so you have a situation where we've seen the, the physical economy looted. No money for infrastructure, no money for police and fire and education and rebuilding roads and developing <clears throat> new power plants and water management. Instead, that money is going to the rigged credit default swap market, which was rigged by LIBOR, a group of banks that lied about what the interest rates were so they could make money from all the cities they sold these insurance premiums called credit default swaps to. Geithner knew it. He not only covered it up, but he protected it. And he protected it at the New York Fed and now as Treasury Secretary. Wow. And so here we are, you take a city like uh, Birmingham, Alabama, which now owes something like $345 million in extra money. Uh, it's Jefferson County, actually, not the city of Birmingham. Right. Yeah, but yeah. They, they did a, a sewage treatment program. They sold bonds for it. And they owe more money now on the interest rate swaps than they do to pay off the bonds to build the sewage system. And so the city went, the county rather, went into bankruptcy. They had the layoff of ambulance and uh, health uh, personnel. They laid off police and firemen so they could pay Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley. 
No, you have that's not the here. only city. There's something like 114 cities that are considering legal well, action against the LIBOR banks, and, and Eric Holder said well, we're not going to prosecute them. Well, first, the Eric Holder, with the Fast and Furious, everybody down below him got chopped, but he didn't. He Again, he was a, the Teflon attorney general. This guy well, is a criminal right back. The general uh, just uh, exonerated him completely. It's just disgusting. And the same thing goes with uh, the LIBOR scandal. Uh, Geithner is totally guilty. Then we have, uh, I, I want to get into this other article that you have here that's quite important. Romney links Benghazi attacks to the original 9-11. And, uh, of course, his... I want you to go through this article rather than me kind of reading it off. Just go through the well, analysis. Yeah, let, me, let me make the salient points. Look, everybody in intelligence knows that there was a Saudi role in 9-11. And what's being raised now by Romney, correctly, is that that Saudi role has been covered up. And yet these are the people who are funding the al-Qaeda networks that are shooting at Americans in Afghanistan, Iraq, Pakistan, and Libya. Now, the problem with Romney's analysis is that for his own reasons, he's saying that we have to defend the rebels in Syria but we have to make sure that we don't arm the al-Qaeda group and the rebels. We just arm the good guys. Now, I got news for you. There's some al-Qaeda people in Syria who are suicide bombers who don't mind walking around wearing al-Qaeda flags. But many of the al-Qaeda people are deeply embedded inside the so-called Syrian Free Army. And you're not going to be able to tell one from the other. And if you exactly. arm them... Those arms are going to be used against Americans and against Christians and against Jews and against Shia Muslims in Syria by the Saudi-backed al-Qaeda forces. Is he just uh, naive? Why would he make a statement like that? Is he just trying to politic the issue when he really doesn't divinate exactly what's going on? What's happening? I'm, I'm not sure if he's naive or if he's still got a few of these rotten neocons in his uh, defense grouping. You know, he did... There's a story, an interesting story, that Ann Romney and Tag Romney helped him get rid of a couple people who were holding him back, including some of the Bush-era neocons. But he still got John Bolton in there, and John Bolton is one of these bomb-throwing oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. right-wingers who, who, he, he who still says there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. Okay. Well, you know what he does is he gets out of, in, out of bed in the morning, hits the alarm to turn it off, and says, bomb them, before he brushes his teeth. Well, I, I think there might be weapons of mass destruction in his mustache, to tell you the truth. <laughs> yeah, it might, might be. Now, uh, but in, in any case, what happened yeah. is that Romney, Romney's beginning to find his footing on the economy. Not that he has a solution, but he's finding his footing in, in well, he's a problem solver, expecting yeah. what's wrong with Obama. Yeah, he is a problem solver. In other words, an economy, economics 101, which obviously he lectured Obama during the debate, requires you to actually make goods and services like China, you have to provide goods and services. You have to change infrastructure. You have to build things like NAWAPA. You have to have power distribution networks. You have to create the means and the engine to have an economy. And what Obama's idea is just print more money and make more people dependent on the state. It's not and a good plan. That's what Bernanke and Geithner have done. Right. And also contract credits so small business can't become medium and large. And, and ration whatever you do have left and spread it among everybody. But... That means you genocide. Welcome back uh, to the Nutramedical Report. Uh, just to capsulate, uh, my assessment of Romney now despite the fact that the man probably has a significantly higher IQ than Obama, in summa cum laude law and business from Harvard, he's a problem solver. The reason why he's made so much money, and you can see the Romney family shares these talents, uh, you can look aside from the fact that Mormons are, by and large, more conservative than most people. And yes, he was liberal when he was first elected in Massachusetts. He's come out strongly in 2008 and since on pro-life. His pragmatic approach is a political approach, which is, to reverse the executive order that Obama turned over in when he took over power in 2009 uh, for international funding of abortion and to promote a law which will bring, as uh, Fred Graves has said here, the jurisdictionary uh, uh, director, that a simple law that would actually deal with that issue. So we stop using pro-life as a political football. And not only would the states not be able to institute uh, abortion, but we would just get rid of this issue. Then the issue of health care. 
Obamacare is not based on the template of Romney Care. We don't have death panels. We have control of prices of equipment and drugs and other things. And we, and, and to be honest with you, I don't have a problem with the quote the mandate. Even if you uh, have some kind of a tax or some way of actually topping up the people that can't afford it, so that they can make up the difference with a state or federal tax. The real issue is you do not want federal controls like top-down communism. You want compassionate socialism that's based on an economic model called American capitalism, not corporatism, which is global. And Romney is a problem solver that he could absorb some problem-solving principles from the LaRouche Foundation that could deal with this, like putting in the WAPA, bringing back uh, our coal fire plants that are being shut down by Obama, opening up licensure, doing rational hydrofracking without chemicals that won't destroy water tables, making America energy independent, and a better foreign policy that's more collaborative uh, rather than confrontational or you know, trying to ignore issues like Obama ignoring issues until we're caught in a, in a real regional war that can expand like crazy. So let's talk about these other issues uh, that you want to talk about in this segment. Uh. Well, what we're going to be doing is, as, as I talked to, to you about last week, is Lyndon LaRouche is going to be doing a webcast every Friday night on the issues that are confronting the next president. And right. what he's been saying is, look, Let's forget the party system and partisan politics. It doesn't really matter if someone's a Democrat or a Republican once they get in. Once they get in, they have to address the national interest. And this is what we have not seen under Bush Jr. or under Obama. We've seen the opposite, that where party has become everything to the exclusion of actually solving problems. And I was just talking with an old friend the other day who said that Ronald Reagan would have been very much appalled by the kind of partisanship on both parties today because when he was governor and then when he was president he was willing to sit down with tip o'neill he sat down with people like mervyn dimely in the california senate and worked out policies that were part of the american dream and so you want in the presidency someone who's acting above parties for the nation and for the future and so what lynn is doing is every monday on our website larouchepack.com he has a discussion with the five candidates we had who ran for Congress, one of whom won the nomination and is the, in the 22nd District of Texas, is the Democratic nominee for Congress, Keisha Rogers. And then on Friday evening... Yes. Having people like Keisha, by the way, should be in his cabinet. Having people from the Roosh Foundation that have what we call problem solving. Don't put these labels on, communist, socialist, capitalist, whatever. Problem solving that's compassionate for people in America. Problem solving that's compassionate for not starting international conflicts. Problem solving that generates the engine of business rather than creating a communist system that collapses it and it has austerity fascism because you have no economy. Well, and, and what Keisha's doing is, uh, you know, if people are interested, you can go to the LaRouchePack.com to the candidates page and follow Keisha's campaign. But what Lynn will do this Friday night and the next three Fridays is present reality and the strategic picture and what the solutions are. Wonderful. And I think you're going to see a demand from the population that these guys stop talking in generalities and in, in attacks and actually start putting forward solutions. And I think we're seeing a little bit of that from Romney in the first debate. And yeah. I hope he picks it up on foreign policy, because this president's foreign policy, Obama's foreign policy, is suicidal. We've got a breaking news with Tim Alexander. I want to mention that. And also, we'd like to get uh, Lyndon on the program, even for five minutes, just to kind of remind people to listen to this uh, video uh, presentation. Well, which I'll, is, I'll work uh, on that. Now, that when yeah. I'm, this Friday okay. at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, on LaRouchePack.com, L-A-R-O-U-C-H-E-P-A-C.com. So you right. can see Mr. LaRouche. He'll be discussing what's happening today in the House Government Reform Committee. He's going to be talking about Benghazi, talking about what is a competent strategy to join with Russia and China for cooperation rather than get sucked into a war with them on behalf well, of... Uh, right, we don't need a war, we need, a we need a defensive earth policy and a, a policy to deal with world climate change, which is going to threaten food supplies. Uh, the breaking news, Tim, what is it? Uh, yeah, within the hour, uh, Turkey has, uh, Turkey's Air Force planes, fighter jets have forced a Syrian passenger plane uh, that uh, was on, en route to Syria, left Russia, uh, to land in Turkey. There's 
searching for non-civilian cargo. Now, this is clearly an act of war, and it follows in with the Turkish warning today that it was going to up uh, the ante. Uh, well, what they're doing is basically saying they're they're enforcing the first stages of a no-fly zone, which is if you fly over Turkish territory heading towards Syria, we're going to down even your civilian planes, saying that it's transferring military cargo. Yeah, and I'm not even sure this was over uh, Turkish air airspace. It may have been. Uh, I have several articles here, and they're, they're not clear on that. Yeah, but the fact they did this shows that this is a this is something that's going to require a response from Russia because the plane originated in Russia and there may have been Russian citizens on the plane when it was well. Uh, and this diverted. is this is what I this is what I've been saying is the whole intent of bringing Turkey into this situation as part of NATO in the first place. It's a targeting of Russia, not Syria. Right. Well, yeah. And a proxy war with Russia is very the third world war. And, and Here's that's a scenario. What the globalists want. Here's a scenario that could happen, okay? Uh, we have an active war where we've continually squeezed. Now, even the banks in China, Shanghai Bank of, of Iraq in Shanghai, China, is now no longer is getting sanctions from America to deal with financial transactions of the sale of oil so Iranians can buy staples like wheat and, and cooking oil, etc. That's a crime. That's a crime against 80 million citizens in Iran. And our nation are the most bedeviled, evil nation on earth to do this to another nation. This is an act of war. The same kind of act that brought Japan into the Second World War was in the, with the embargoes that they did. Now this downing of this plane indicates that Turkey figures we're going to be a proxy for NATO. They're going to enforce a no-fly zone. And Russia will have to employ either the S-300 or S-400 in the aircraft system. And they're going to start downing. Turkish planes. And when that happens, the shooting war is going to get started, and somebody in Syria will activate a Yakan hypersonic cruise missile or one of these super cavitation torpedoes, and we're going to have some of our fancy sitting dock uh, navy sitting in the Persian Gulf and the Mediterranean are going to go to the bottom. And when that happens, you're going to get a call on the red phone to Mr. Obama, the 200 to 120 miles off the coast of the Pacific and Atlantic, that the boomer Russian submarines that carry five times the throw weight of America have every U.S. city over 50,000 targeted with multiply targeted warhead systems that cannot be deflected by our space-based weapon systems, our ground-to-space uh, anti-missile systems, etc., and that we are on the verge of annihilation of the United States. Well, and the that, ones, uh, the, the, the city on the seaboard, like New York, Washington, Miami, all the major eastern seaboard cities and western seaboard cities are literally minutes, and I mean very few minutes away. Seven, seven minutes. Impact. Seven yeah, minutes. Yeah, because they, they can do a flat trajectory. They can also launch uh, nuclear-armed cruise missiles through the torpedo tubes. So yeah. essentially, uh, there is no warning. No, there's no warning. What would happen is before the phone conversation would end with the president, those cities would already be in vapor clouds heading toward the sky, and the souls of those people would already be going to their destination. Yeah. Well, and the only way to deal with this, the, the most efficient way, is to remove Obama as quickly as possible, because the Joint yeah. Chiefs yeah. don't want this war, neither do the Russians. Well, I don't know why they don't do it, because they need to actually, if they need to even delay the election, uh, once they remove Obama to get a proper candidate in there, let's do it. But we need to get this situation settled very quickly. Um, and if the election, what I worry now is as the election slips away from Obama, he's willing to do anything. And the he's power broker behind him. More dangerous now. He's like a caged animal that's bleeding. Uh, and uh, try to get into the cage with him, and you're asking for trouble. It's going to get very bad. Oh, boy. Pray. Talk to you next week. Peace. Pray a lot and watch these uh, videos. Take action and pray that uh, Romney gets in because if we get another term of Obama, it's over.